Hello and welcome to today's session where we're going to be taking a look at constructing acceleration diagrams. So we start our problem with our space diagram. Here we're using a 4 bar linkage. As you can see when it rotates uh, we get a rocking motion in the second longer lever. You'll need to create your velocity diagram and from there we can move on to working out the accelerations. So we construct ourselves a table. Into the table we make one entry for each link. Um, so we've got BC, A to B and AO. And now we're going to put in what we know. So first of all the velocities which we've measured from our uh, velocity diagram. <coughs> so let's just pop those into the table as you can you can see, so 5.45. Next we're going to put down what we know about acceleration. So we've got two components, radial and tangential. Now the radial component is given by v squared over r. And so we can work that out for each of these using v squared over r and the velocities taken from the velocity diagram. So that gives us our radial components, as you can see they're in these directions. So now we do need to move on tangential components, then we can see that the first one is zero because this is a constant speed, so it's not accelerating in an angular fashion, therefore the tangential is zero. The other two are unknown, so we'll simply put these in as question marks at this moment. Now let's uh, start to construct our acceleration diagram. So the first known is B relative to C, and it's obviously going to be from B to C. It's the uh, cent towards the centre of rotation. So we draw a parallel line. Now I've an idea where this diagram is going to lead me, so I'm going to put my parallel line in up top left. And we scale it. We've already worked out the uh, radial component, so we can to a suitable scale and put that vector into our diagram. And there we go. Remember it's from C to B. It's acceleration of B relative to C but from C to B. Now we can move on to A, B. So this is the radial component. We don't at this moment know the size of the tangential component but we do know the radial. So let's just get ourselves positioned so we can get a, a parallel line AB and it's got to go through point B. So it's going to go from B to A and be parallel to link AB. And again we can scale it from the calculation we did earlier. So let's just get that in and we can get our first point here. And I'm just going to label this up A dash. It's the radial component of A relative to B. It's no more than that. I have an unknown which will be perpendicular so I can put a direction in. So let me just drop a perpendicular down because we know that point A has to sit on this perpendicular line but at the moment we don't know where on that line it's going to be. So that's our that's our A relative to B dropped in. Now let's turn our attention to A relative to O where we've been able to work out the radial component so we know it will be from A towards O, the centre of rotation. And the other thing to be aware of is that because O and C are both fixed points they are the same point in, a in an acceleration diagram. So let's get ourselves um, lined up so we can do a parallel. A bit of adjustment, you, you might need to uh, spend a bit of time just puzzling out how you're going to get the best parallel line drawn, but here we go. I think we've finally sussed it here. So we're going to go through point O and parallel to AO. And of course we can scale this one, we've worked it out here. So let's, uh, let's scale it and we've got another component of A relative to O. It's the radial component. We still haven't got the tangential component. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to just ink these in so you can see these vectors a bit more clearly on top of the construction lines. You, you won't need to do this for your assignment, but um, you'll find it will help you see what's going on. Uh, 
Okay, so label, label up A and A dash. So we now need the tangential A relative to O, which is going to be perpendicular to the radial line we drew. So let's, um, let's line up here. We can ink this straight in because we know it's going to intersect the other component. And where these two lines actually meet, that is going to be our point A. Okay, so now we have point A. So now what we can do is get the absolute acceleration of A relative to its center O. And to do that, we join O down to A. That gives us the direction of that acceleration. Remember, it's instantaneous. It will change as it rotates. And we can measure it and scale straight off to get a value. So there we go. We have a value for the acceleration of A of 870 meters per second squared.